Good afternoon. <laughs> Welcome to the Finance Committee meeting this December 2nd, 2014. First item is to receive a presentation of City Workers Spotlight video. City Manager. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Chair. As you know, um, one of our goals outline our strategic plan is to um, improve city management service delivery and while at the same time in enhancing our public image and pride of our city employees and so what this is is a series of um, videos that what we're doing with these videos are is really highlighting the the work of our, our employees and so we're calling it city worker spotlight and so Chris Cummings has been kind enough to help me parks department and so we're this is one of many series you're working with a local filmmaker to, to do. Go ahead, Chris. Hello. My name's Rick Ewing. I'm the assistant director for the Parks and Recreation Department, and I've been with the department now for 23 years. We're here today in Honor Heights Park, and we are transforming this wonderful place into a magic wonderland of light. And uh, this is a, a tradition that has been going on for 23 years now, and uh, people have come from every state in the Union, many, many other countries, and it is a tradition that is very meaningful to the citizens of Muskogee and our visitors. Uh, we did uh, a lot of research on what was being offered around the country, and the uh, offerings out there were not garden-related. And what was, you know, what was Honor Heights Park known for in the day? for its flowers, for its animals, for the beauty of the setting. And we decided to offer a garden of lights. This year, we will probably have somewhere in the neighborhood of 1.4 to 1.6 million lights, um, give or take two or three. Our park crews begin the preparation for Garden of Lights here in the park October 1st and we work diligently mixing in the preparation with all of our other normal duties that we have on a daily basis uh, until we open on Thanksgiving Day. On any given day, you're going to find five to six people working on the Garden of Lights, and, and as Thanksgiving approaches, the numbers jump to where we will have maybe 15 people in the park uh, working on some aspect of the festival. There is no admission to get in to see the Garden of Lights. It is a drive-through display and we do gladly and very appreciatively accept donations and all the donations that are given are used here in Honor Heights Park. Uh, not one penny of it goes to any other park. We open Thanksgiving Day and our last night of being open is uh, New Year's Day. So we, uh, this year, that will be November 27th. And if my calendar is correct, uh, New Year's Day, always being January 1st, that will be the last night that uh, we are open. We do uh, traffic counts, and depending on the weather, which obviously is a big influence on the attendance, uh, we will have anywhere from 60,000 to sometimes 90,000 cars. Um, and that is just in that, uh, that 30 some odd days of the festival. And uh, the last time we did an actual attendance count, uh, we were right in the neighborhood of 276,000 visitors. You know, one of the uh, marvelous things about Garden of Lights is the personal interaction that you can have. You can take a stroll around the lake, uh, you know, it's a beautiful stroll, light draped. Uh, um, we oftentimes see kids running out there or, or people walking, holding hands. Uh, last year, we started something new at the Papillion, and that is winter skate. And we have a synthetic ice rink. And if you've never ice skated before, now is your time. Uh, you know, you can't beat it. Uh, it's non-temperature dependent. So if it's a day where it's 60 degrees, 
and you want to wear your shorts out ice skating, then, hey, come on. It's a great time. And uh, at the Papillion, you can also uh, schedule hay rides. And uh, we, can, we can put 20 people, sometimes 30, depending on their size, uh, on, the, on the hay wagon. Um, you must call ahead and, and, um, and schedule that. So those are two wonderful activities uh, to, to enjoy with the Garden of Lights out here. And for all you runners and walkers out there, be, be you an athlete or not, uh, we have the Garden of Lights Run, uh, which will be December 13th this year, and it's sponsored uh, by the Friends of Honor Heights Park. So please Google Friends of Honor Heights Park. We'd love to have you as a member, uh, help support the park. And uh, there, there will be information on the website as to how to enter the fun run and the 5K run. It's a fantastic evening getting to run through the Christmas lights. You don't want to miss it. I tell you this is this has been something you know I was kind of embarrassed to see my name on there but you know because this is all about the city employees and the work they're doing and we want to make sure that we highlight these things so that the public you know they can see what our, what our guys are doing and so these series of videos will highlight city workers in different departments we started with parks and recreation uh, I think when when I met with Chris I said you know we need to do something to kind of you know sh highlight to the public what city employees do and I think this is the start and so we started with uh, Garden of Lights because it's this time of the year. But we're going to go to public works, sanitation, uh, cemetery, different places to let people know what we're doing. And then we'll go to the other departments that really get all the notoriety, like the police and fire department. You know, we want to we show the citizens not only you know, the, maybe the folks they don't see um, as much as they see police and fire. So we want to really try to keep that going. So that's what this was about. And, and we thought that we started here. Uh, so the city council could see it. We're going to run it on channel 14 and put it on our website and start blasting on Facebook in different places. Great right start. Well, very nice. Very well done. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Item number one. Consider approval of finance committee minutes of November 18, 2014. Any additions or corrections? 
move for approval. Second. I have a motion to approve. A second. Is there any discussion? Roll call. Deputy Mayor David Jones. Yes. James Gully. Yes. Dan Hall. Yes. Marlon Coleman. Yes. Wayne Johnson. Yes. Leanne Langston. Yes. Ivory Van. Yes. Derek Reed. Yes. Mayor Coburn. Yes. And the motion passes. Item number two. Consider approval of claims for all city departments 1114 2014 through 1125 2014. Do we have a report from the purchasing committee? The purchasing committee met earlier today and uh, we reviewed the report of claims and I hope the Council likes the new format for the claims list. I think Ms. Langston uh, had a great idea of making it a little more simpler, and I move for approval. Second. I have a motion. We have a second. Are there any questions or any discussion? Roll call. Deputy Mayor David Jones. Yes. James Gully. Yes. Dan Hall. Yes. Marlon Coleman. Yes. Wayne Johnson. Yes. Leanne Langston. Yes. Ivory Van. Yes. Derek Reed. Yes. Mayor Coburn. Yes. And the motion passes. Item number three. Consider rejecting all proposals received for an expandable video security system and direct staff to issue a request for qualifications or take other necessary action. Mr. Cummings. Mayor, committee, uh, when we started this project, we, had, we were looking at two facilities, which would be easily done with an RFP. As we got into this, there are other facilities that said, hey, we need this, we need this, we need this, and it quickly grew to, and to seven facilities and we're looking at Martin Luther King, the new Martin Luther King Center, adding that in, in there. Since uh, uh, when we released the RFP, we had a mandatory meeting with uh, prospective vendors and there were uh, over 20 prospective vendors. It quickly became evident that an RFP is not the best way to address this. So uh, what I would like to do is, is reject all the RFPs, they ha they're all the responses, they have not been opened, and uh, go back and, and use a request for qualifications to choose a vendor to give us a solution. I think that would be the best way for the city of Muskogee to get the uh, best value uh, and the best system for, uh, for our citizens and for our, our employees. Move for approval. I have a motion for approval, do we have a second? Second. Is there any discussion? I have a question, yes. Chris. Okay. What facilities, uh, and one of the questions is, is like Three Rivers Museum, the War Memorial Museum, uh, they have their own security. Are they part of this request for qualifications? Uh, um, not at this particular time, but what we want <coughs> is we want a, a system that will grow with okay. us as our needs grow. So uh, the facilities right now <laughs> that uh, we're looking at is um, Payment Center, Airport, Teen Center, uh, River Country Water Park, Swim and Fitness Center, um, and I know I'm missing a couple of them sure. there. Okay, thank you. Hey, Chris, yes, are we looking at going to an IP system? Yes, sir. And what is the source of funding for that? Uh, currently, there is some money in the budget, uh, in, in my budget. Uh, when we first started the project, the, the uh, money was put in, in there, I believe it was about $35,000 and that we know is not going to be enough to do all of those facilities. So that's another reason to choose a vendor who can help us plan uh, what we need and, and budget for it to, to go ahead and, and, and get all the facilities that we need and, and going forward. Okay, because I start to say $35,000 no, isn't going to touch. I, I know. When we were talking about two facilities, then, then it was more in the ballpark. But then when it expanded to seven, I knew that that was not. Do you have plans to ask for resources somewhere else? Yes, sir, I do. Okay. Other questions? Roll call. Deputy Mayor David Jones. Yes. James Scully. Yes. Dan Hall. Yes. Marlon Coleman. Yes. Wayne Johnson. Yes. Leanne Langston. Yes. Ivory Van. Yes. Derek Reed. Yes. Mayor Coburn. Yes. And the motion passes. Item number four. Consider approval of receiving donated funds for the month of September in the amount of $455 and for the month of October 2014 in the amount of $1,000 for the city's animal shelter sponsorship program as per the attached list or take other necessary action. I have Chief Eskridge, but I don't see him. Well, he's, he's not here, but Chief Cotton is here. What this is is that any donations that we receive from the um, public, um, it has to be received by the city council. So this is donations. Normally Pam was the person that did this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But since we did the reorganization, they took it away from Pam. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what this is about. So we're two months behind. This is catch up. And so we're asking that um, we re we're allowed to receive 1455 for the months of September and October. Questions? 
Move for approval. Oh, yeah, oh I'm yeah. sorry. Yes. Yeah. Um, yes. What I'm asking is that uh, we receive approval to receive these donated funds in the amount of 1455 for the months of October and September. We're two months behind. We'll make sure that in the future uh, that each month um, the police department is present to do this item. Move. Oh, we had a second. Did we have a motion and a second? I I'll a put one out there. Got a motion. Do we have second. a second? We got a second. Any discussion? <laughs> It's almost like he's auctioneering. Or Roll call. <laughs> Deputy Mayor David Jones. Yes. James Scully. Yes. Dan Hall. Yes. Marlon Coleman. Yes. Wayne Johnson. Yes. Leanne Langston. Yes. Ivory Van. Yes. Derek Reed. Yes. Mayor Coburn. Yes. And the motion passes. Item number five. Consider approval of the agreement between American Demolition and Site Services, LLC, and the City of Muskogee for the Community Development Block Grant Demolition Bid Group 35 in the amount of $134,736.30 or take other necessary actions. Ms. Callahan. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair and Council Members. This is um, the Community Development Block Grant uh, Program. It is project number 35. Um, it is four 35 structures. Um, it was advertised for bidders twice in Muskogee Phoenix as required by the Community Development Block, block Grant. Notices were sent. It is not a requirement, but I do that as a courtesy to the demolition contractors that have um, requested to have notifications. Um, I sent them to 29 contractors and it's also been available for download on the website and uh, then it was picked up by the bid services um, that are out there, the Bid News Dodge Report. Um, from that we received five bids um, that were opened on October 29th at 2 o'clock, Midwest Wrecking, Tonto Construction, Arc Wrecking, Moonlight Excavating, American Demolition, the bids ranged from, as you can see, 321600 down to American Demolition, um, $134,736.30. And staff is recommending awarding the contract to the lowest and best bidder, American Demolition and Site Services. And all, these homes are, all of these homes are vacated? Yes. Okay. Well, they may be vacated by transients, but they are vacated <laughs> they're by supposed to be. Yes, yeah. they're supposed to be. Any other questions? Entertain a motion. Move, Move for approval. approval. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? I appreciate the photographs that was provided in the packets that make it very easy to look at the homes, know the condition of them. I agree. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Roll call. Deputy Mayor David Jones. Yes. James Scully. Yes. Dan Hall. Yes. Marlon Coleman. Yes. Wayne Johnson. Yes. Leanne Langston. Yes. Ivory Van. Yes. Derek Breed. Yes. Mayor Coburn. Yes. Motion passes. There being no further items on the agenda, this committee is adjourned. We'll call to order the Public Works Committee meeting. Item number one, Pam. Consider approval of the Public Works Committee minutes of November 18th, 2014. Any additions or changes? Move for approval. Second. A motion and a second. Any discussion? Roll call. Deputy Mayor David Jones. Yes. James Scully. Yes. Dan Hall. Yes. Marlon Coleman. Yes. Wayne Johnson. Yes. Leanne Langston. Yes. Ivory Van. Yes. Derek Reed. Yes. Mayor Coburn. Yes. And the motion carries. Item number two. Consider approval of change order number one to the construction contract with KBC Construction Incorporated for the Muskogee Wastewater Lift Station Rehabilitation or take other necessary action. Mr. Stewart. Yes, I want to start off by telling you this project is 86% complete. Wow. It's on schedule. It was due to uh, to finish January 1st. Uh, this is a very good contractor. They've been uh, diligently working on this project. This change order was put together uh, from staff and from engineering that has been overseeing the lift station projects. And uh, I want to point out to you the original contract price was $1,768,000. $875. This change order has no contract price. It will remain the same. Uh, if you'll notice that we are deleting uh, $87,000 worth and adding back in $38,000, what that's <coughs> going to do is allow $49,000 left in the allowance part of the project. So there'll be $49,000 there, and that's how it balances itself out. Uh, item 2728, the uh, removal of the 12-inch plug valve on the, on the force main and the and the valve uh, at the hydro stop were projects that we had to have completed before we could get this project going. And that's why th those are being deleted, uh, simply because they're already done. They were done by staff. The uh, old lift station number 11, we found that building to be uh, fairly structural sound, so uh, we didn't need to, to uh, demo that. 
the uh, cellular modem kits, we're going to do that a different way. We're going to do it on an online service, so we didn't need those. And then the added back in items, uh, uh, paint lift station number eight, we just uh, found some uh, areas that we should have improved that we just didn't get. Uh, along with the other items, uh, Prague is here and George is here if you want to talk specifics about them. But uh, these are staff recommendations. They have been approved by Clay McAlpine through Holloway, who's our engineer for the project. Uh, I will point out that this will add 82 total days to the project, and that's because it's going to require 45 additional days for that work to be done. And then uh, 37 of those days, and I know 37 is kind of an odd number, but that's what the contractor told us it would take to get the materials in to do that project. So this will move the completion date to uh, March 30th. And again, I will say that he is on schedule to, to finish on time. Uh, we see no problem with this change order, and we recommend approval. Any approval. Second. I have a motion second. Any other questions or discussion? Roll call. Deputy Mayor David Jones. Yes. James Gully. Yes. Dan Hall. Yes. Marlon Coleman. Yes. Wayne Johnson. Yes. Leanne Langston. Yes. Ivory Van. Yes. Derek Reed. Yes. Mayor Coburn. And the motion carries. Yes. Oh, and the motion carries. <laughs> Pam, I don't have anybody to sign up. No, sir. So we are adjourned. We'll now call to order the special call uh, meeting of the Muskogee City Council. Roll call. Mayor Bob Coburn. Here. James Scully. Here. Dan Hall. Present. Marlon Coleman. Here. David Jones. Here. Wayne Johnson. Here. Leanne Langston. Here. Ivory Van. Here. Derek Reed. Here. Uh, item number one. Consider approval of an ordinance amending the City of Muskogee Code of Ordinances by amending Chapter 2, Administration, Article 6, Budget, by amending Section 2-552, Restricted budgeted funds by authorizing an additional situation for expenditures from stabilization funds when the same is to be used to eliminate a significant financial liability of the city, providing for repealer severability and declaring an emergency, and if appropriate, take action on the finding that the expenditure of stabilization funds for a sick leave buyout plan eliminates a significant financial liability of the city or take other necessary action. Mr. Tucker. Mayor, members of the council, as you'll recall, when we last met uh, in, at our regular city council meeting on November 24th, um, after executive session, the council approved the 2013-14-15 uh, or 14, 15, uh, FOP, Fraternal Order of Police Collective Bargaining Agreement. Um, one of the provisions within that agreement, of course, was the sick leave buyout. Uh, pursuant to... Pursuant to that uh, uh, motion to approve that, you also directed me to bring back a, an ordinance which would provide for a mechanism for using uh, money that has been set aside in the stabilization fund to fund uh, that buyout program. So what I've done in Section 2552 is include another category, if you will, which the ordinance relates to as situations in Section A4 uh, <coughs> by the inclusion of an additional clause which states or to eliminate a significant financial liability of the city. So uh, item number A4, which says that, says that any money can be spent uh, in situations where amounts retained exceed established minimum levels uh, and the proposed use is of a non-recurring nature, so it's, such as a study, uh, cost of a program whose ongoing costs are otherwise funded, or, and this is the new language, to eliminate a significant financial liability of the city. Any expenditure of funds within the stabilization fund category uh, do have to be uh, precipitated by a finding uh, that one of these criteria are met uh, by two-thirds majority of the council. Uh, all other remaining provisions of the uh, ordinance as it was <coughs> adopted in 2009 have remained the same. Uh, I'm recommending, recommending approval of this ordinance. I'm also recommending approval of the emergency uh, in light of the uh, fact that we did have that FOP contract, which uh, did uh, essentially bind the city to some uh, financial obligation. Um, so I propose that we'll do this in three motions. One, to uh, approve the ordinance. The second, to approve the emergency. And finally, to issue a finding that the buyback program does meet the qualifications uh, of the amended ordinance in Section A4. Uh, and I'll phrase those motions, but I'm happy to answer any questions in the meantime. Okay. Is there a motion or, or motion or discussion? Move for approval. Second. As stated for the first item. And that'll be, uh, the motion will be to <coughs> approve the ordinance. Yes. Second. And that's all we need? For this one, okay. yes. So motion and second. Okay.
Roll call. Deputy Mayor David Jones. Yes. James Scully. Yes. Dan Hall. Yes. Marlon Coleman. Yes. Wayne Johnson. Yes. Leanne Langston. Yes. Ivory Van. Yes. Derek Reed. Yes. Mayor Coburn. Yes. Uh, motion carries. Number two. Uh, <laughs> Move for emergency. Second. second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? Roll call. Deputy Mayor David Jones. Yes. James Scully. Yes. Dan Hall. Yes. Marlon Coleman. Yes. Wayne Johnson. Yes. Leanne Langston. Yes. Ivory Van. Yes. Derek Reed. Yes. Mayor Coburn. Yes. Motion carries. Mr. Tucker. And finally, Mayor, uh, we need a motion uh, to from the council uh, declaring and making a finding that the uh, uh, expenditure from the stabilization fund for the sick leave buyout plan does, in fact, eliminate a significant liability of the city. And this does require a two-thirds majority. So moved. moved. Second. Got a motion okay. and a second. Any discussion? Roll call. Deputy Mayor David Jones. Yes. James Scully. Yes. Dan Hall. Yes. Marlon Coleman. Yes. Wayne Johnson. Yes. Leanne Langston. Yes. Ivory Van. Yes. Derek Reed. Yes. Mayor Coburn. Yes. Motion carries. Item number two. Consider an executive session to discuss and take possible action on the following. A, pursuant to Section 307B2, Title 25, Oklahoma Statutes, consider convening an executive session to discuss negotiations with the International Association of Firefighters, Local Number 57, and if necessary, take appropriate action in open session. B, pursuant to Section 307B4, Title 25, Oklahoma Statutes, consider convening an executive session to discuss the workers' compensation claim of Arthur Leakes, and if necessary, take appropriate action in open session. Introduce a motion for executive session. Move to convene into executive session. Second. And a motion and a second. Any discussion? Roll call. Deputy Mayor David Jones. Yes. James Scully. Yes. Dan Hall. Yes. Marlon Coleman. Yes. Wayne Johnson. Yes. Leanne Langston. Yes. Ivory Van. Yes. Derek Reed. Yes. Mayor Coburn. Yes. Motion carries. We will now consider ourselves in executive session. We will now we now reconvene from executive session. Roll call. Mayor Bob Coburn. Here. James Scully. Here. Dan Hall. Present. Marlon Coleman. Here. David Jones. Here. Wayne Johnson. Here. Leanne Langston. Here. Ivory Van. Here. Derek Reed. Here. And we're accounted for. Item A. Mr. Tucker, do we need any action in that? Um, yes. <laughs> no, you don't need any action, but let me do my, let me do my uh, okay. my thing. Uh, pursuant to Section 307B2, Title 25, Oklahoma Statutes, the City Council did convene an executive session to discuss ongoing negotiations with the International Association of Firefighters, Local Number 57. After being fully briefed of the status of those negotiations, uh, I believe it's not uh, necessary for any action at this time. Uh, item 2B, pursuant to Section 307B4, Title 25, Oklahoma Statutes, the City Council did convene an executive session to discuss the workers' compensation claim of Arthur Leakes. Uh, after uh, having fully discussed the issues uh, and, settlement of the, and potential settlement of this claim, uh, I believe it's appropriate that uh, we uh, entertain a motion to uh, waive subrogation in the third-party motor vehicle accident and to settle the claim in full uh, for the amount of $200 uh, plus expenses that have already been paid. Is there Move a motion in that regard? Second. <laughs> motion and a second. Any discussion? Roll call. Deputy Mayor David Jones. Yes. James Scully. Yes. Dan Hall. Yes. Marlon Coleman. Yes. Wayne Johnson. Yes. Leanne Langston. Yes. Ivory Van. Yes. Derek Reed. Yes. Mayor Coburn. Yes. And that concludes our agenda. I'm sorry. The motion carries. And that concludes our agenda for today's special call meeting. Thank you.